Well, look what I did to my arm here. Uh, I have an inflammation of the elbow. It's called bursitis. And now the doctor put me into a cast and I have to wear this uh, for the next uh, couple of days. And this kind of restrains my movement a little bit. Um, it's a little bit annoying as well because I cannot drive my car anymore. Uh, but there is one advantage to the whole thing because I've seen that beneath the cast there is this, hmm, fibrous material. It's not cotton. It's not cotton. It seems to be some kind of a synthetic fiber. Um, that is uh, basically the material that they wrapped my arm in before they put on the cast. And I think that this stuff here would be quite interesting to look at under the microscope. Let's do that. As a mounting medium, I'm trying out a clear nail polish now. Um, this is uh, a mounting medium that dries very quickly, but it has the disadvantage uh, that it does shrink. Um, so um, I do not know whether it's going to be uh, very good or not. Um, normally I would uh, pre-dry the nail polish. Uh, with that I mean is I would let the bottle uh, stand uh, open for a couple of hours um, so that it thickens a little bit. But I'm not doing this right now. I'm simply going to add a little bit of the synthetic material now. I think it is synthetic and it's difficult to cut. Okay. Um, and other reason why I'm using um, clear nail polish is because it is hydrophobic and if these are indeed synthetic fibers then they too are hydrophobic. So the mounting medium and the specimen they should be compatible. If uh, I were to use a water-based mounting medium then uh, the chances would have been pretty good or pretty good that it uh, would form a lot of bubbles. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, let's see. Some a cover glass, of course, and I don't not know if this actually is not a little bit too thick. So let's try it. Uh, maybe it does work. Okay. So I'm going to give it some time now to dry and uh, then let's put it under the scope. And this way I'm applying some pressure on the cover glass right now uh, to make sure that the specimen is sufficiently thin. Well it did take a few days uh, for the nail polish, uh, polish to dry um, and uh, we're starting uh, with the low power magnification objective and this is what we see. Um, and uh, I'm observing this uh, on the bright field, so you can see the individual fibers uh, dark or darker on, on bright background. And what I will be doing right now is I will be simply increasing the magnification. And so from four, we're using the four times magnifying objective to the 10 times, 20 times, and up to the 40 times magnifying objective. First in bright field, later in dark field. And because there's not really much for me to say here, uh, I'm simply, I simply decided to use the time now to talk a little bit about the mounting medium that I used, uh, as I mentioned, nail polish. Um, this is, if I remember correctly, nitrocellulose. Uh, and uh, this uh, is basically has the advantage that it's very fast drying. Um, and it, it does have the disadvantage though that it shrinks uh, when uh, it dries. Um, so this means that there can be some air bubbles uh, later on, but actually if you apply sufficient uh, medium, sufficient nail polish, um, then there will be always regions beneath the cover glass uh, which are going to be uh, free of air bubbles. I've right now been playing around a little bit with the diaphragm, with the con condenser diaphragm, and now we are in dark field. You can uh, basically back uh, with the four times magnifying objective, and in this case, uh, the fibers reflect the light and there is no direct light from the lamp. I'm again going up with the magnification. And uh, this uh, already allows us to see some of the structural details inside the fibers. You can actually see that they're a little bit transparent. Yeah, and there are some, some structural details. Now the thing uh, with uh, nail polish is, is that it is hydrophobic. And this means that the sample has to be completely dry if you want to uh, mount uh, your sample, your specimen. It doesn't mix well with water, so that's, uh, that's one of the problems. So it's, and those fibers here are of course ideal because they themselves are being synthetic um, and they're quite quite dry and they don't absorb uh, water that well. 
So I've always wondered, well, how does uh, this actually compare to, uh, to cells, the size of the fibers uh, to cells? And I actually did find a new way to compare that. And that's going to be something I'm going to be doing right now. I'm going to superimpose two images. So it looks a little bit messy now. But what you see is, is you see uh, the fibers in the background and on top, uh, using at the same magnification, you see algae. So the moving picture that is another algae and you can see that the fibers are actually significantly thinner than the algae. So basically, are we able to see individual cells? Well, maybe not the individual cells, but the thickness um, of the individual fibers, synthetic fibers is actually thinner. Uh, than the cells of, uh, of algae, okay? So that uh, should kind of put everything a little bit into relation here. And uh, finally, some, some, some still images, uh, a little bit corrected, color corrected using Photoshop, but that is, uh, these are the fibers again, and I made the background a little bit darker, um, and you can see that they're quite nice and transparent using the 4X magnifying objective and then 10X magnifying objective. The total magnification, of course, is much higher on screen and also depends a little bit uh, on your screen size um, and a variety of other factors. So that's it for today. Well, in the meantime, several weeks have passed. My cast is gone right now. Everything's fine again and the inflammation is also uh, now gone. Um, natural fibers, uh, like for example, fur um, or the like, uh, what they, have, they, they can be distinguished quite easily because what they have is they have a central canal, um, which is hollow, um, and they also do not have a uniform thickness. So, okay, so these synthetic fibers, well, they basically can be identified quite easily because they're quite uniform. Uh, those uh, synthetic fibers, uh, they also make uh, a significant part of the so-called microplastic uh, problem um, that uh, appears uh, right now in, in several ocean, in oceans and, and in nature, where um, those fine plastic and synthetic fibers, where they start to accumulate. Okay, in any case, I wish you um, all the best and happy micro-punting and bye-bye.